Three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Lifestyle Academy. And I've got a new friend online. His name is Eric, and there's an M. M must be for magic. Twigs. You there, Eric? <laughs> I am here, Brad. It's a pleasure to be on the show. What's the M for? The M stands for Matthew. Matthew. Eric Matthew. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a good stage name. Eric Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> so you're out in the East Coast area, yes? Absolutely. I'm about 20 minutes from Washington, D.C. I know where that is. That's where they got politicians there. Yeah, we, we have a couple. <laughs> I've, never, I've never been there, though. I've been to Maryland. I've been through there. Did some East Coast driving, but uh, I'm in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're, we're Minnesota nice over here. <laughs> nice and cold. <laughs> How long you lived there? I, I was actually born and raised here. So oh, this man. is where I grew up and everything. So. Deep roots. I had the same thing. I lived in the same house for 53 years, got married, moved to the west side. Then we went down to Asheville, North Carolina for two years, came back. Back in Minneapolis, deep roots. Wow. It's good that way though, isn't it? Absolutely. So you're married and got kids and all that kind of thing? I have a nine-year-old and I have a six-year-old. And, and all there in quarantine? Absolutely, so I've become a homeschooler. <laughs> <laughs> it's good though, keeps you busy. You know, I don't have any kids. My, my wife's got one, he's grown and off, but uh, I know it's a lot of work because it doesn't come with an owner's manual, as they say, right? <laughs> it, it is quite challenging, but no, it, it's definitely good. I mean, when you see, especially when you see them making progress and moving yeah, forward. I, I've never had the parental gene inside of me, but for a while I was thinking, I want to be a big brother. I want to get myself one of those big brother, little big sister things. And right. You just got somebody <laughs> to play with when you go to the playground, hang out. There you go. But you're committed where I'm not, where I can kind of let them go, you know? <laughs> so Eric, you're a speaker, yes. motivational, inspirational speaker. Absolutely. Got, got any specific topic that you speak about and educate? So my primary topic is overcoming procrastination. And that's, that's what my book is based on. My book, The Discipline of Now, 12 Practical Principles to Overcome Procrastination. That's what I speak about, you know, but it's not just about overcoming procrastination. It's really about being more productive and making the most use of your time. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can not procrastinate and do a bunch of non-productive stuff in a day easily, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> What'd you do I mean, today? It, it, oh, I rearranged the furniture and I right? moved the fork. And <laughs> 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 so do you go like, do you put like a checklist and kind of like double check it and make sure that these are like revenue producing activities or? Well, yeah, I think the key is you, you have to be clear on what your priorities are. So I always say that clarity is the starting point of success. So mm -hmm. first and foremost, you need to really be clear on what your specific priorities are and then make sure the things you're doing each day are moving you in that direction. So even if you get, let's say, if you get one thing done, if that one thing is directly tied to your priority, then it's a success as opposed to doing 10 things like moving the fork <laughs> that really don't have anything to do with your priorities. So, I mean, that's really the key. Yeah, they got to kind of like have a roadmap. It's like if I'm headed from Minnesota to Los Angeles and I decide I should go over to Eau Claire and check things out, I'm going the wrong direction, right? Exactly. <laughs> and no matter how hard you work, you're still not going to get to your destination, right? Yeah, you got to be clear on it. So do you do, do you uh, educate people as far as those SMART goals and things, you know, the SMART, what is it, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic? And yeah, I, I use elements of that. So, so my main thing, when I look at goal setting is I, you, you should start with a five-year plan, right? So you start with, okay, let's fast forward. It's five years from now. And I'm saying, you know what? My life is great. This is the best five years I've ever had. Why? What do I need to see in my life for, for me to feel that way? Oh, okay, so I'm a best-selling author, I'm this, I'm that. So then you work backwards and you say, yep. what should I be doing for the next 12 weeks? What, what are my 12-week goals? I, I'm, just, I'm just a firm believer in setting goals in like 12-week blocks. So, so what's my 12-week plan to get me to where I need to be? So then you get clear on that. 
And, and then from there you say, okay, so what do I need to do each day that's going to move me closer to my 12 week objective? Right. And so, so yeah. And then the goals you set, it really needs to be specific things. You need to be able to measure it and it needs to be achievable, relevant, time bound and all that good stuff. So. Yeah, it, it, uh, when you really think it through, it's actually common sense. It's pretty makes a, it's not too difficult, but we always get distracted with these weird things. Like if you got your goal defined, like a football game, they know where they're going. Except for sometimes when a dude goes the wrong way. But if you know where the goal is, you go that direction. But if you don't really have a plan mapped out, you can be doing all sorts of goofy stuff. That's like you said, you want to be a best-selling author. You can't just go hang out at the bar. You should probably be at the coffee shop writing. Right. Right. So in that example, so let's say the only thing you get done that day is you write 500 words towards your book. Okay. But at least it's, it's moving you within that direction. And I'll yeah. tell you, you, you said it's common sense. I would say for every hundred people, maybe three or four have written goals maybe three or four can tell you specifically what they're trying to accomplish. It's, it's, I, it's one of those things that's simple, but it's, it's not easy. And then it doesn't happen a lot. Yeah, that's kind of what I meant. It's really easy to get distracted. Like I've got what I call entrepreneurial ADD. I have a real <laughs> hard time focusing. Like I'll tell you a quick story, but my background is in the event industry and my wife has tried to keep me on focus on events, events, events. And we went to this holistic trade show and there was a, a product there. What it was, was, you take grandma's ashes and you plant them with a tree. So you, you mix all the ashes up in the soil of this tree and you plant a tree. And it's, it seems like a good idea. And I think, hey, I could market that. It's kind of cool. You have grandma, she's in the backyard. You know, you pull up a chair and glass of lemonade and you sit under grandma's tree. And my wife goes, you're supposed to be focused on events. So I said, well, a funeral's an event. <laughs> so that's my justification of getting off focus. <laughs> It's really hard to stay focused because our brains, I think you got your left and right hemisphere, but then there's other opportunities and you get that shiny object syndrome. And so you stay, keep people focused on that too, right? Get that. Mask. Yes. So even you mentioned like going to a conference or going to a trade show, I have people I work with, they, I literally give them a document where they have to beforehand write down what are their ideal outcomes. Like if you go to this conference, what are you looking to get out of this? Okay, I want to learn about storytelling. Okay, I want to, so it really keeps them from the whole shiny penny thing. So when they get there, yeah, that looks nice, but it doesn't have any, anything to do with me wanting to learn about storytelling. Or, so that is very critical. So if, you, if we go into situations, again, getting clear on what it is we're trying to accomplish makes it easier. Yeah, so you got a little sheet they get and they have to check off all the boxes. Did you do all this stuff that got you closer to your goal? And you find out that they were over in the corner talking with some girl and, and eating Tootsie Rolls or something. It's, it wasn't, didn't get you there, dude. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> life is, it, life, it gets easier when, you're, when you go in, even if you just, you're going into a meeting, if you're thinking beforehand, okay, what is my ideal outcome? It, it just helps you really just stay focused. And because we can all be victimized by that whole shiny penny thing. Yeah. I do classify yourself as a coach. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I, my wife is a, a coach too. She's a shaman and uh, she teaches mm. people about dream work and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just not much of a coach. I have a hard time with it, but I've got a process I call GOSPA, which is that algebraic thing. It's goal, objective, strategy, plan, and action. Right. So you get that goal set and then you put the stuff in place and just go there. But yeah. I have, I'm, I'm challenged with coaching. I, I like coaches because they, what they do is they, they kind of adjust the rudder, you know? Yes. You got to drive it, but they can kind of adjust the sails so you're getting in the right direction. Like, hey, wait, wait, get you back in line. Also, the th a cool thing about coaches and people, sometimes people think, well, I don't need to hire someone like you because I can watch it on YouTube. Well, then you're all over the place. And the other part about it is sometimes you need the feedback. Because you, your brain can say, okay, I can do all this stuff because I learned it. But there's things that they didn't quite get. And you, someone like you can kind of point that out and shine a light on it and go, did you think about this? And then they have that, oh, wow. And not only that, the coach 
hold you accountable. Yeah. So you, you can learn. So, and the funny thing is the, the main role of the coach isn't to really be the expert. It's really to draw the ideas out of you and ask you the right questions. Yeah. And so you can have the information, but the critical thing is getting the information out of yourself and then being held accountable. So if you know, if I know that I'm meeting with my coach on Monday and he's going to ask me, hey, Eric, did you do that website update like you said you would? Now I have motivation to get it done because I know he's going to ask me about it and I don't want to say I didn't do it. All right. Do you do like group coaching and stuff too? I do group coaching. I do one-on-one. -on -one, but I also, I speak to groups as well. Like we do, I do a lot of workshops and I'll do yeah. keynotes. So if someone's supposed to do their homework and they come back the next day to the conference and you're in the room and so you didn't do your thing. Well, my dog ate my homework kind of thing. Right. <laughs> right. How about events? You do any retreats or anything like that? Yeah, so I'll do like conferences, associations. You you which, speak at them, but do but do you do you do your own like mastermind group or anything like that where you get a bunch of people together and head out? I haven't I haven't done that. Um, I know we, I mean we we're talking about that. Like I, I host a podcast um, and it's it's the 30 minute hour. It's inspirational for business leaders. And we're talking about doing events like you're saying where we get people together well now we're gonna to have to do them virtually until the world comes back exactly to some yeah. semblance of normal i was um, on my focus of events hospitality travel right. and tourism and i was going right. at it and then all of a sudden this i, I produced a trade show um it happened on march 4th just made it and then a the week later the facility called me and says you just made it because we canceled everything all through may yeah so I was fortunate and I got a friend in Costa Rica that's got 150 acres. We're looking to build an event center on the property. That's kind of why I asked about the retreat and stuff. Cause when you do those kind of things, you have to get to it. The idea is to get out of, out of your normal space and into something that's totally foreign. And then your mind starts thinking differently. You can help with these other ideas. Yeah, but, but we're in the, it's funny you say this because we're in the exploratory phase. It's kind of a group of us that we, you know, we have podcasts, we speak. So we're talking about getting speakers on different topics together in like a retreat type setting and bring people in and, you know, talk about kind of how they can improve. And so you have people that want to write a book. You know, I've got someone I'm thinking about who he's written like five books this year. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so well, we're going to get the we we'll get together and, and so yeah so that's something we, we are thinking about like a mastermind group kind of like the napoleon hill thinking we're rich get those well, like minds together well yeah i mean i think that's a part of it but to really get information from different perspectives yeah you know and so they, they walk away yeah and you're right they, they can build connections with the attendees can connect with one another they can learn from the speakers and yeah it's going to be good yeah i was doing something like that when i was in Asheville. i limited it to seven people because for me, seven is a real cool number, like the seed of life kind of thing and seven days in a week and seven right. notes and seven colors and all that kind of stuff. Right. And one person would, we'd all go around, we'd express what we're, what we're looking to do. And then everybody would give input on how you're going to get all that done. And then next week when we meet, then there's that accountability. Did everybody do what they said they were going to do and what's the next step? It was kind of a cool format for doing that. And you got six people looking at you and go, and so did you do your homework? Mm. <laughs> the accountability factor comes in. So Absolutely. you're kind of doing the work of seven people, right? Oh, sure. <laughs> There's a dude, one dude. Yep. Cool. So do you have, you, did you say you had a book? Yes, I do. It's, it's The Discipline of, of Now. It? The Discipline hey. of Now, 12 Practical Principles to Overcome Procrastination. There you go. Now. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, there's no time like the present, right? For sure. I got this thing when I wake up in the morning because I don't really recall my dreams and my wife's always recalling her dreams, but I wake up and my mind it starts going and then I'm laying there and I got I to gotta implement. I'm always a, I'm a do kind of guy because I need enough to do it. I get all my work done by, you know, four or five in the morning. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so yeah, what's your uh, website? So, so the discipline of now.com. If you go to that website, you can That's actually, yeah, there you go. I try to make it simple. So you go there, you can get the book in paperback. You can get it on Kindle. 
you can also get it in audio, whichever is your best preference. But that, yeah. that's where it is, the disciplineofnow.com. Is it on Jeff Bezos' site? Amazon. You can, you can go right to Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Bezos. You know that yeah. guy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You can get it there. Absolutely. So do you have any upcoming, um, like when this stuff clears, you got any upcoming make prospective date that you're planning for, for doing a, a live retreat or resort or a conference well, or seminar? We're, or we're, in the, we're in the planning phases as it stands now. So we don't have like any official dates. I, I, the dates that we're coming up with and we'll come up with are going to be, the next thing is going to be virtual. We're, we're just sure. assuming that things are just going to stay this way yep. for a Use while. Use all those things to springboard into it. Right. Right. How about so location? You thinking like Vegas or hometown? <laughs> no, so when things open up, we're thinking about in this Maryland area, mm -hmm. just you know, getting people together and uh, that way. But for right now, I mean, we're just going to meet on a Zoom platform, make it virtual. Well, that's an amazing and, way to do it. There's a guy that locally here that started a, a group of networking and it was all based. He was doing six events a month and then this thing hit. So he's doing all of it virtually, but he's now he's reaching out, you know, basically globally and getting a lot of traffic. So you can get a lot of momentum and interest in something like that. And then exactly what you're talking about, you plant that seed off in the distance, but we're going to be, we're looking to do this in 2021 sometime. It's probably going to be in either March, April or September, October, put it in their head and then they're all excited for it. Absolutely. You want to do it now, but you can't do it now because we're quarantined. <laughs> well, cool. Is there anything else that you want to offer? I, like, I don't like to do these too long, so I like people to be able to condense it all and get to know who you are and what you do and all that kind of stuff. But is there anything else you want to offer? Well, yeah, so I uh, have a special video that I'll send out. And all you have to do, uh, anyone that's watching this, they can just text the number four seven four seven four seven and type in the word twigs time t-w-i-g-g-s t-i-m-e and you'll instantly get a short video of me speaking about two powerful tips to beat procrastination well Special you do keep it easy don't you four seven four seven four seven twigs time correct dude <laughs> i like it well, Eric, I appreciate you taking the time. If you want to do more of these uh, down the road, just let me know. The way that I do this is I beam it up to the universe and then propagate it out on the internet and hashtag it with keywords and stuff. But if you ever have something that's a specific topic you want to talk about, I'm good for doing another one. And if, when I send this out, if you'd share it also, that's the whole synergy thing. Absolutely. I mean, as soon as I see it, I'll share it. And then also, you know, again, I'm the host of the 30 minute hour podcast. So you know, we, we do Facebook Lives every Monday at 7 o'clock, and it gets downloaded to your favorite podcasting okay, app, so you can find me there, too. Let's get connected on good old Facebook. They shut down my ad account. Really? Yeah. It's always something, isn't it? No, it's always something. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate you taking the time. Hey, thank you. Peace. Take care.